Two shot. It's getting smarter. Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Two Shot Factor. Elon Musk, X-Files Chip. Now, as many of you may or may not know, Elon Musk has produced a chip for your brain. Brain implant technology that they just put this chip, I guess, into your skull. Mind reading technology might soon come. Now, the N1 chip, that's the chip, that's the processor. Your smartphone, mouse, or keyboard will be able to control signals from the brain via Bluetooth. I, I keep hearing this is the wave of the future. I am the new way to go. I am the way of the future. The human cognition is made up of two systems. The limbic system, which is for needs and wants and emotion, and the cortex, which is for planning and thinking. The Neuralink is a super digital intelligence layer which will connect the brain to the computers and eventually artificial intelligence. That's the third system. Neuralink is going to tap into the tiny electric fields in the brain. It'll interpret the data as ones and o's, somewhat similar to the matrix. Now Elon Musk, as you may or may not know, is not just a character from The Simpsons and that one time on South Park. He actually owns a digging company, Tesla guy, he flies rocket ships, to, tries to fly rocket ships to Mars, and he's got the Neuralink, oh my god, some kid just looked like they broke their neck on the Tosh.0 show. It's really bad for kids to watch that show. But we should be studying the works of Elon Musk before he turns into an official comic book super villain. But you're trying to do good things and you're a billionaire. I mean, yeah. that seems a little bit like either superhero or supervillain. You have to choose one. I'm trying to do useful things. <laughs> I mean... Where am I? What? Don't try to move. And don't be afraid. Elon. A lot of this stuff has actually been done before. It's nothing new. It's just being done a lot better. You know, this whole chip thing reminds me of that chip Dana Scully found in her neck in season three of X-Files. I'm feeding the chip impulses. The graph is recording its output, which when I remove the current changes slightly, but continues. This means the neural network is storing information. Biological information? That was my first guess. Now you've already told me the chip was placed subcutaneous at the back of the neck, right? So it makes sense that it would be recording the impulses traveling to and from the central nervous system. But what? But look at the graph. Those are what we call reverberatory loops. They indicate the presence of circular neuronal activity in the brain. Memory formation. Huh. The chip seems to be mimicking that process, replicating the memory function in the brain. Like a computer hard drive. <laughs> yeah, but no hard drive we've ever seen. This kind of neural network could be not only collecting information, but artificially replicating a person's mental processes. You could know a person's every thought. Frightening. This is kind of similar. It's more of a third party kind of program. She doesn't have the power to control it. But it's interesting because, I mean, there are older versions. Such surgeries had been done before for deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's sufferers. Though these traditional methods have a 1 in 100 chance of causing a severe brain hemorrhage. No, I'm telling you, Doug, your brain will not know the difference. And that's guaranteed, or your money back. What about the guy you lobotomized? Did he get a refund? You're talking ancient history. They want now to use properties to not only make the brain accept the chip, but to make it think that it's part of itself. With uh, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. I think this is extremely important. Neuralink, to create a high bandwidth interface so we can be symbiotic with AI. Derek Tushot pretends to be smart by reading stuff straight from Google. When you think of traditional neurosurgery, you think of strong sedation, anesthetics, cutting of the head that would leave terrible scars and no hope for a future in modeling career. You can see here that the neck and the head is getting twisted by a terminator robot clamp, which can cause pain. Your head will be shaved too. Carlos, can you please run clips of bad brain surgery? Uh, 
Uh, stop screaming. We want to bring you in. We want to bring you in for more peaceful surgery and get rid of all the complexities from the previously mentioned surgeries. We also offer a cheap lemonade. Oh boy! The BMI, or brain-machine interface, is a direct communication pathway between a wired or enhanced brain and an external device. This is made possible by Neuralink, or the N1 chip. It's into an 8 millimeter diameter, uh, 4 millimeter tall cylinder. Exploding it, uh, blowing, like opening it up a little bit, you can see there's, there's the thin film, which has the threads that Elon talked about, which is the wisp going off to the side. There's a hermetic substrate, and then that gets welded later to a package that goes over top, and that's made into our custom electronics. And you really can't manipulate these with your hand. That, that part at the top is uh, just a backing material that's surgical packaging. They're, they're peeled off, uh, the threads are peeled off that one at a time by the robot to place it into the brain. And uh, safe and um, good enough that you can, it's, it's not like a major operation. So if you're gonna go stick something in your brain, you, you, you want it to not be giant, uh, you want it to be tiny. And, and then the, the interface to the, um, to, to the, to the chip is, is wireless. So you have no wires poking out of your head. Very, very important. Elon. So they attach a tiny processor which can connect to a cell phone via Bluetooth. The company is planning to equip its first human patient with this technology by the end of next year. Actually, Carlos, did we have a clip of that one patient that they were testing this on? It's so damn hot in here, man. I don't know what, what good it does, but it's there, and then it follows you and tracks you. Uh, Elon has uh, a response to that. He's sending it to me right now. <laughs> after the show. But hold on a second. What if someone hacked into your brain? Jesus Christ, dude! That's crazy. I mean, reading your thoughts is one thing, but if someone could control you with a smartphone? Hey, ladies! And Elon wanna have checks. What? Severe brain industry. Severe brain industry. Severe brain industry. Severe brain industry. Just like you see, you see the robot, the robot on the left. And, um, and then the, um, what looks like the needles for insertion next to a penny, but in fact the, the, the actual needle that gets inserted is way, way tinier. It's that little tiny thing at the, where the arrow is pointing. That's actually the size of the, the needle. It's about 24 microns in diameter. Very tiny threads that are about a tenth the cross-sectional area of a human hair. So it has to be done with robots. Sir, you know who that is? The man who's revolutionized the car industry. Henry Ford, good to see you. As healthy and vibrant as Detroit itself. Hello everyone, and welcome to the tour. I'm Elon Musk. Are we gonna have some fun today? Oh great, a stupid tour guide. Can we just talk to someone important, please? We want to go to Mars. No, sir. This is Elon Musk. For some reason, he's sharing a console with Homer Simpson. His mind is as rich as an Italian wedding soup. Homo, what are you thinking now? Uh, Pittsburgh 35, Dallas 31. I don't want to do this. It's bad. I'm scared. No, absolutely not. My brain, no. I don't want people touching my brain. I like Elon Musk touching the monkeys. He can mess with the monkeys. They've also done tests on monkeys about this. Monkeys. Monkey. I don't have my key. I lost my key. It's fairly controversial, but early tests on monkeys have been successful. We, we wish that we didn't have to, to, to work with animals, right? That we just wish that wasn't like a step in the process. And we try to be very careful and thoughtful about it and, and do it as efficiently as possible. Um, because we believe that the benefit to, to humanity is, is in the end, like the, the, the benefits outweigh the, the negatives. Yeah, I mean, but we have made, a, a, you know, a monkey has been able to control the computer with its brain. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> FYI. I, I didn't realize so. we were running that result today, but there well, it goes. For our first patients, we're looking at four, four sensors, three in motor areas and one in a somatosensory area. And that connects wirelessly through the skin to a wearable device that we call the Link, which contains a Bluetooth radio and a battery. What Neuralink wants to do is to give people the ability to tap into those representations, to get ac better access to that information, both to repair broken brain circuits and also to ultimately give us better access to better connections to the world, to each other, and to ourselves. That, that's a very zoomed in view. So 
they're all very, very tiny, and the robot is very selectively applying them very, del very delicately. Like a tenth the size of a human hair, basically. Well, not my hair. My hair is thin. I am the new way to go. I am the way of the future. Derek Tushaw is not responsible for any time you may have wasted in your own life. We even want this to be possible under conscious sedation. That means you can get rid of the complexity and the risk of general anesthesia, as well as many of the unpleasant side effects. If you look at that, you might think that looks pretty messy and it's not clear what's going on. But I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to take those neurons and I'm going to rearrange them so that they're in the order of the tuning that they have, Look, just as I told you about those two neurons. And if you do that, look what happens. Now suddenly structure emerges. Sure. Anyway, I'm still new to this whole topic, but if you like this video or have any comments or questions, make sure to leave a like or a comment or a question below and even subscribe. Come on, I know what you're thinking. Someone has erased his memory. Wait, excuse me. Someone? I mean, we're talking about the fucking agency. Shut up! <laughs> My brain hurts!